In this video, we're going over how to use the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro for beginners. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. And the video today, I'm gonna to walk you through how to use the Google Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro for beginners. We're gonna take this down to all the basics from how to navigate the phone, how to download applications, how to answer a call, how to send text messages. We wanna to try to go over all the basic things you would need to know to use this phone. And towards the end, we will also go over how to set up your email accounts as well. So hopefully after this video, you will feel a lot more comfortable using the phone and know where everything is. Um, if you find the video helpful, if you learned anything in this video, do us one favor and make sure you hit that like button, that thumbs up, that really helps us out. These videos we produce for free, so don't forget about us. In the first section, I'm gonna be going over just a quick walkthrough of the exterior of the phone and also how to navigate the interior, the home screen, and how to just find your way around the phone. So let's go ahead and get started. Left side of the phone, you won't find anything but the SIM card slot, which is basically what you use for your phone service. In the box of your phone, you'll find a tool like this that you use to pop out the SIM tray if you need to swap the SIM cards. That's all you're gonna find on the left side. On the right side of the phone, you will find a power button at the top here, and then a volume up and a volume down. Now, when you tap on the power button, that will wake up the phone from sleep. When you tap it again, it puts it to sleep. Um, that's it, there you go, wakes it up. Now, when you need to unlock the phone, just take your finger, put it in the lock here, and that'll unlock it really easy there. Um, try again. You can also do a swipe of the screen as well to unlock it. So, screen is unlocked. Now, this is gonna be your home screen. Now, I wanna show you with the volume button, this is actually uh, what you're gonna to use to control the sound. So if you want the phone on vibrate or silent or on full volume, all you need to do is press the volume up button and it's gonna take you to a menu that will allow you to control the phone sound settings just like this. I'm sort of pre-explaining it because when you tap it, it only stays up for a few seconds. So I want you to know what you're gonna see once I do it. So tap volume up and tap on this little bell and this will give you the option. So vibrate, silent, or full sound. Right now it's on full sound, but if I tap it and then I tap the this icon here, I just put the phone on vibrate, tap it again, this time, the bell that has the slash is silent, so no sound at all. Tap it again, tap the bell, and just go to the regular bell. This means volume is totally on. Uh, that means I'll get calls and texts, all of my notification sounds. And this um, here will help me to raise or lower the main volume of the phone here. So those are the volume buttons, and that's how you control the volume on the phone. Okay, now if I hold down on the power button here, notice it takes me to the Google Assistant. It does not power the phone off. So that's an important thing I wanna point out. If you're actually trying to turn the phone off, you don't do it through the power button. You actually have to swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, and this is the on-screen power button right here. Tap it, and then you can tap restart to restart the phone. You can tap power off to just turn it off completely, or you have an emergency button here that you can tap, and it will make the phone make a really loud sound, like a siren to kind of alert people that you need help, okay? So that's how you power the phone on and off, and also how you control the volume. Next, we're gonna go over, now that we're on the main screen, how do we find our way around the phone? Now, one important thing to note here is the phone does come in what is called gesture mode. So um, on older Android phones, there are three buttons that will show up at the bottom of the screen and you navigate the phone using those buttons. 
but on this newer Google phone, it comes in the, what is called gesture mode. So gesture mode is a bit harder to use for a new user. So I'm gonna show you how to switch the phone from the gesture mode to the button navigation menu. And I think that will give you a little bit of an easier experience if you are new to the Pixel phone. So we're going to swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, and tap on the settings wheel right here. By the way, that's how you get to the phone settings. It's just following the, the steps I just showed. So just make a mental note of that. Now we're going to swipe all the way up and go to system and then gestures and then go to system navigation. And we're gonna tap on three button navigation and you'll see just like that, you now have three buttons at the bottom of the screen that will now make it much easier for you to navigate the phone. So guess what? If I wanna go back to the home screen, I'm gonna tap on this little circle in the center, which is known as the home button, and that will take me back to my main screen. And now let's talk about navigating the phone using these three buttons here. So, like I just said, this is the home button, and you're gonna use that to always take you back to this screen, which is known as the home screen. If I tap on any one of these little icons here, which are apps, uh, and just to give you a quick explanation of that, an app is, app is short for application. Think of an application like a program on a computer. Computers have programs, phones have applications or apps for short. So if I say apps, just know that that's what I'm talking about. So. If I go to any one of these little uh, apps here and I want to come back to this main screen, I just need to tap my home button. Now, to the right here, we have what is called the recent apps button. And the recent apps button just simply shows you what apps are running on the phone at that moment in time. So if I tap on this recent apps button here, guess what? It shows me, hey, you were just in the settings. And guess what? the settings menu is still running in the background. If I swipe over, I have another app that I was previously using. If I wanna go back to the settings that I was just using, I can just simply tap here, and guess what? I am back in the settings menu. Now, so we've gone over home, we've gone over our recent apps, and on the left here, we now have what is called the back button. Tapping the back button just takes you back one step. So I showed you how to get to this menu, the system navigation menu, so we could change um, the settings. And if I wanna go back one step in the settings, I'm gonna use the back button. So watch this. This will take me back one step. I'm gonna tap it again. Back one more step. Now I'm on the main menu of the settings. And if I hit the back button again, guess what? There's nowhere else to go. I'm on the main menu of system, if I tap it again, it just takes me, um, it should take me out of the app. So these are the three main buttons you'll be using to navigate your phone, home, back, and recent apps. Now one more. Okay, so now that we've gone over the buttons, next I just wanna show you a few more things that you will need to know. So swiping up on the home screen, which is just taking your finger and just dragging it up the screen, takes you to your app drawer. This is where you'll find all of the apps that are on the phone, and I can swipe up to see I have a few more here. So all the different applications that come with the phone are gonna be in this menu here. And guess what? If you wanna download more, you can, and they will all show up in this section. Now, later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how to download more applications, but for this section, I just wanted to show you where you'll find all the applications that are on the phone, okay? So that is called your app drawer. Next, we're gonna swipe down from the top of the screen and go over this section really quickly, which is called the notification panel. Now the notification panel is where you'll find all of the different notifications that will come through the phone. For example, if you have a missed call, it will show up in this section. If you have a new email, it'll show up in this section. If you have a new text message, it'll show up in this section. So 
simply swiping down from the top of the screen. This will kind of let you know what is happening on your phone and if there's anything new for you to look at or address. Right now, I don't have any new uh, notifications. My menu is clear, but uh, if I did have notifications, they would all show up here. Now, one important thing to note, let's say this notification said, oh, you had a phone call. Well, guess what? You might have already known you had a missed call from that person and you want to get rid of that notification. All you have to do is just swipe to the right and that will get rid of that notification for you. So important note there. Now, um, if you see something that is important that you'd like to take action on, all you need to do is just tap on that notification. So if you see an email on here that looks important, obviously there's no emails here now, but if you saw an email on the screen here, you could tap on it and it'll take you right to your email application where you can then go in and read the email, reply, delete, whatever you want to do with it. So this is the notification uh, section. And at the top here, you have what are called notification. At the top here, you have what are called switches. Now these switches are just shortcuts to different functions on the phone. Now real quickly, I want to show you this before I go into the details of these switches here. So let's hit the home button. If I swipe down once, I'll see these first four switches and swiping a second time brings up more switches. And then I can swipe to the left and then I have a few more options. So I just wanted you to see how you get to all the different switches that are available. At the top of the switches, you'll have a brightness bar, which you can use to lower or raise the brightness. So just an important note there as well. And to interact with these switches is really easy. If you see it lit up in green, it means that that setting is turned on. And if it is gray or black like this, it means it's turned off. So right now, guess what? My flashlight is off, right? But if I tap on the switch, guess what? My flashlight is now on. So simply tapping it will turn on that setting. And if there are more options, it will pop up. So for example, I'm currently connected to my Wi-Fi here because it's lit up and my Bluetooth is on, but I'm not connected to a Bluetooth device yet. Now guess what? If I want to connect to Bluetooth headphones or a speaker or a keyboard or anything, I'm going to tap on the button here and it's going to take me to a pop-up and it will begin to ask, Hey, are there any new devices you want to connect to? Um, Sometimes it will take you right there and other times you'll need to do this. Hold down on the button. So let me just show you one more time what we did here. So Bluetooth is on because it's lit up in green, but I'm going to hold down on it. Just put my finger on it for one second and it will take me to the Bluetooth menu where I can then connect to a new device. So I can tap on the plus and basically I'm hitting pair new device and it will then show me a list of all the available devices that have Bluetooth that I can connect to. So for example, this is a Samsung uh, smart TV I have, so I can tap there to connect to it. The Lux is a uh, Fitbit I have that I can tap on and connect to. Apple TV, all these different devices. So that's how you connect to a Bluetooth device. Make sure your device is in the pairing mode and then you turn on Bluetooth on the phone and then you just tap on it in the Bluetooth menu and then it connects. That's it. So that's just a little preview of how these switches work. There are quite a few switches that are um, available for you to use. So I would encourage you to go through and look at the different options here and just play around with them, see what they do. We're going to swipe up. And basically now we're back on the home screen and that is your quick tour of just navigating the phone. In this next section, we're gonna go over how to make calls, receive calls, and how to send and receive text messages. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take you to the phone menu, which is the blue circle that has the phone in it at the bottom left. 
This is going to be your phone menu. And you'll have favorites, recent calls, contacts, and voicemails. Now tapping on this icon here, this is the dialer. Tapping on this will allow you to initiate a call. So now that I'm at the dialer, I can simply enter a phone number and tap the green button, the green call button to start the call. So let's type in a phone number here and let's make a call. So area code, phone number, hit the green button. The call is started. If I'd like to um, put the phone on a uh, speaker phone, I just tap on speaker. Household pests are ready to make. There you go. I can also tap on add call if I'd like to add someone to the call or the mute to turn off my microphone. When you're finished with the call and you want to hang up, just tap on the red button at the bottom here. And guess what? Our call has now ended. So that easily is how you make a call. Now, if you'd like to answer a call, someone is calling you, here's what you're gonna do. I'm gonna initiate a call now, and we'll see the call come through the phone. It'll show up as a pop-up. I can tap on the red button to decline it or tap on answer to answer the phone. There you go. Call is answered. I can hit the speaker button to put it on speaker. And when I'm all done, I can tap on the red button here to end the call. Now, calls are gonna look different depending on if you're currently on the phone using it or if your phone is asleep. If your phone is off, when a call comes through, it's gonna look different. So now I'm gonna make another call, and this time we're gonna see what it looks like when the phone is off or asleep and a call comes through. So let's initiate our call. And you'll see it as a, a big, bigger pop-up on the screen. What you'll need to do is put your finger on the call button, put the finger there and either swipe up to answer or drag it down to decline the call. You see that? So if I continue to swipe up, if I continue to swipe up, guess what? That would have answered the call. But because I put my finger on the button and just dragged it down, that basically declined the call. I told the person, I don't wanna talk right now. So let's show you one more time. I showed you how to decline it. Now I'm gonna show you just the full process of answering. Finger on the, on the call button here and just swipe up. And now we've just answered the phone and we are now on that call. When you're all done, hit the red button, call is ended. And that's it, that's how you answer the phone and that's how you make calls. All right, let's jump in now to text messages. How do we send a text message? Tap on the little message button at the bottom of the phone right next to the phone button. So this is messages. Okay, so tap on the start chat button here and all we'll need to do is type in a phone number first so we know who we're gonna message. So you need to come to the top here, tap in the box, this top section here first so we can input who we're gonna make the call to. And second, we're gonna tap on the little dialer icon to the right. This will bring up our phone button menu and I can simply type in a phone number really easily like this. And then I'm gonna hit the green check to start. And now I can tap on the box that says text message at the bottom. And I can begin typing my message. Good morning. And you'll notice you'll have some recommendations that'll show up right here. But we're gonna type in good morning. And we're gonna hit the little arrow to the right here. This is the send button and that will start our message. So we just typed a message. We hit the little arrow that was right here and that basically initiates our text message to start. Okay. If you would like to attach a picture to your message, you can tap right next to where it says text message. There's a little button here. This is the button to attach a picture and it'll show you a camera here and a gallery. So you can either pull a picture you've already taken 
or take a picture right now and send it. So I'm gonna raise the phone and you'll notice the camera is showing me a little uh, preview here. If I try to take that picture here, guess what? It'll take the picture, it'll show me, and then I can hit these, oh. I can hit the attach button here and now it'll attach that to my message. Once you're ready to send it, same thing, tap on this little arrow here and that will send the message. Now, we've sent a message, we can now use our back button here to get back to the main screen of the text message section here. And if I wanna go back later and see if my friend responded, I can just tap on that uh, message there or on the name and it'll show me the text conversation. So that is sending a text message, um, just keeping it really basic there. In this next section, we'll be talking about downloading applications. To download an app is a pretty straightforward process. You'll need to go to the Play Store application here or app. Now, you should see it on your home screen. If you don't, again, just swipe up and you can find it here or in, in this menu here. We'll go to the Play Store. Now, one important thing to note, uh, when you tap on the Play Store icon, it should have taken you right to this screen. If it didn't, it might mean that you have not uh, signed into a Google account on your Pixel 6 yet. Very important, you will need to have a Google account or Gmail account and you will need to sign into it before you're able to download applications. So if you don't see this screen, if you see a white screen that's asking you to sign into a Google account, just know that you will need to do that step first before you get to this screen. If you don't have a Google account, no problem. You should see a button at the bottom of the screen that says create an account. Tap on that button and follow the instructions to create a basic Google account or Gmail account that will then allow you to access the Play Store. Okay, now that we're in the Play Store, let's talk about downloading apps. Now, before I get to apps, I just wanna explain what this store is and all the different things you can do in here. So. In the store, you will find games, apps, offers, movies and videos, TV shows, and books. So this store is sort of a one-stop shop where you'll find many different things you can purchase and download to your phone. So it's up to you what you wanna download on your phone, obviously. And I would encourage you to explore these different tabs at the bottom because they will um, allow you to just see different things you can download and you can decide what you'd like to have on your phone. Now for the sake of apps and games, um, you'll use one of these two menus to um, find the different apps you wanna download. The easiest way to search for a new app is to come to the top of the screen here where it says search for apps and games, tap in the box. This will bring up your keyboard and will allow you to then type what app you're looking for. If there's a specific app you know you want on your phone. So let's say you're trying to download the Uber app. You can type in Uber and hit the magnifying glass in the corner to do the search. And guess what? Here is the Uber app and you'll just tap on the green install button and that will begin downloading Uber to your phone. Now, if that green button next to Uber didn't say install, if instead it had a price in it, $1.50 or any other price, that tells you that that is not a free application and that you will need to pay for it first. So just be mindful of that because you might end up buying something that you maybe didn't mean to buy. So I always say look for the apps that are free first. Look for that green install uh, to be on the button. And if there's a price, just make sure you're okay with paying the price to download that application. So our Uber application has finished downloading and we'll go over in a second how to now find that app and how to open it. But I just wanna show you one more cool trick first. So. To download Uber, we basically tapped in the section here and we typed 
Uber for it to come up. Now, one thing to point out is that next to this little search box is a microphone. You can also just tap the microphone and just say the app you're trying to find. For example, let's say you're trying to find a cool chess game to play. I would tap on the, the microphone and just say chess like this. Chess. It'll then do a search for chess apps and then I can now go to the list and see which one I like the best. Now in trying to decide the best app to download, I would encourage you to just tap on the app and look at the pictures. You'll find different pictures to see what the app looks like. And in this case, it even has a video. If you ever see this little circle with the play button, that means that there's a video you can watch to see what the gameplay looks like. I'm gonna use my back button to go back. Let's go to the next app. Let's see what this chess app looks like. Now I can see here are more pictures here. I can even tap to see the pictures um, zoomed out a bit. So you can see, oh, do I like how that looks? Maybe you don't. Back button, back button. Let's try this one. Oh, this app looks a bit cleaner. I like how this looks. It looks a lot more basic. I might download this app here. Now guess what? This app is free because it has the green install button, doesn't have a price. So you can download all the different chess apps and try each one if you like. But again, that's how you go through to see, hey, before I download it, let me see what it looks like and see if I like the app. Now check this out. This one here is Chess Pro. Notice our green button doesn't say install, it says 349, which means this is not a free app, it's a paid app. So you'll wanna make sure before you buy it, hey, maybe I should just download the free version. This is the free version and try it first and see if I like it. And maybe the paid version has some add-on features that you would like and you decide later to go back and get the pro version. Okay, so that was just a quick rundown of how um, downloading an app works. Let's go back and I wanna show you one more thing. Maybe you don't know what you wanna download. You just wanna see what's available. That's where tapping on the appropriate uh, section at the bottom here is important. So if I go to apps, I have all these options here that I can navigate to explore new apps. So I can go to top charts, kids, categories, editor's choice, and I can go through different sections of apps. Apps for meditation, apps for uh, FaceTiming, apps for working out, apps for striking a pose. You can tap on these sections and then it'll, it'll recommend different applications that you might like. So go through there to explore and see what apps are available. Now, let's find our, the Uber app that we just downloaded and, and let's open it. So let's go to our home screen, tap on the home button here, and guess what? Uber just popped up on our home screen. We can also swipe up and swipe up again and Uber is in our app drawer section as well. Whenever you download an app, it's always gonna show up in this app drawer and I can then tap on Uber to now um, begin to use the app. I don't wanna set it up for now, so I'm just gonna hit the home button. But that is the process to download an application. In this next section, I'll be going over how to set up your email account. So I, I briefly talked about earlier setting up a Google account because you need that to download applications, but you might say to yourself, well, I have a Yahoo account or I have an AOL account as well that I would like to put on my phone. So let's go over the process of how to do that. So to download an email account or excuse me, to set up an email account, you go to the Gmail app. Now, here's the thing. Gmail is a great app that will actually allow you to sign into different email accounts, not just Gmail accounts. So tap on got it here and right under where it says add another email account, tap on that option. And here I can select from any one of these email types to set up on my phone. I can uh, sign into an Outlook, Hotmail, a Live, a Yahoo email, or an exchange. If I tap on Yahoo, for example, it is going to take me to this screen where I'm gonna then enter my 
Yahoo email address and the password. Now, one thing that you'll notice that you don't see on this screen is AOL, which is another very popular email account type. So if you have an AOL or let's say an sbcglobal.net, one of those email types, let me show you what you'll need to do to, to sign to that email account. Let's hit the home button. Let's go back to our Play Store. We're gonna use our back button here just to get to the main screen. Or let's go to apps here. So now we're gonna go to search for apps and games. And the easiest way to do this is on your keyboard, tap on the little icon in the bottom left that has the question mark and one, two, three. Find the at symbol. And you'll wanna type in at and then whatever your email um, account says. So if you have an AOL, it will be at AOL.com. So I'm gonna tap that, tap on the uh, letters here and then hit AOL.com and then hit the search. And it has brought up the AOL app. So guess what? If I wanna sign into my AOL email, I'm now gonna download the AOL application separately by just hitting install. And now I can use the AOL app to access all my AOL emails. Now, one more example, let's tap in the box here and let's erase using this little X button here. Now, if you have an sbcglobal.net, we'll just need to type that in, sbcglobal.net, and hit the search. Now, this will recommend applications that are compatible with at sbcglobal.net email accounts. In this case, the two I would recommend are email, which is the second option, and the first option, which is the Yahoo Mail app. So again, tap on either one, tap install, and then you would open those uh, applications to then sign into that email type. Let's hit the home button, and you'll notice our two new uh, apps have now downloaded, my AOL app, and the new one is gonna be the other email app as well. You can then tap on these, and follow the prompts to put in your email address and password so then you can check all your emails on your phone for those email accounts. And that's it. For this final section, I'll be going over taking pictures, where are the pictures saved to afterward, and also how to browse the internet. So on the home screen here, you'll have a camera icon which you'll use to take pictures. You'll have a photos icon, which is your photo gallery. Every picture you take is gonna save to Google Photos. So you can go here to quickly see the pictures and make edits or changes. Let's tap on the camera and quickly see how it works. Now, the first thing that will pop up when you go to the camera is the phone asking you, would you like it to take a Gmail timestamp or Gmail stamp when you take pictures. Now this can be a cool picture. Now this can be a cool feature for a lot of people because it will then group your pictures based on where you take them. And for example, if you were to take a vacation trip somewhere, it would have all the pictures you took, you know, in that location in a certain folder. Uh, so if you'd like to use that feature, you can enable the GPS or device location for when you take pictures. If you don't think that's necessary for you, no problem. You would just hit don't allow. But again, if you want to use that feature, hit while using the app. For the sake of the video right now, I'm going to hit don't allow. And now we're in our camera app here. Now. It's gonna, by default, be on the camera. As you can see at the bottom, it says camera. So in this set, in this setting, I'll be just taking snap pictures by tapping the white button, okay? If I want to make the picture clear, I'm gonna tap in the section that I want to be the clearest, and it will clean up the picture before it takes it. If you wanna zoom, hit the 
you have these options here, 1X, 2X, 4X. So I can hit the two to zoom in more and the four to zoom in even more or go back to the one or I can kind of use this little slider just like that. If I want to take a video, I need to go over from camera to video. When you're in the video section, the circle will be a lot smaller here. Now if I tap on the little button here, it'll turn red and it will now begin to record a video. Okay. You can pause the video here or just hit the red button to stop the video. Now, one more cool thing to note, if you, you can slide this, if I slide over to portrait, portrait is the setting that allows you to take a picture of something that's in full view and make that the focal point, and it will then blur out the rest of the background. So in this case, maybe I want to focus on this item here, and I want to blur out the background. I want to make sure I'm on the portrait mode, and I'm going to tap on the item here. Now, this is a bit hard to capture because of my camera setup, so I apologize uh, trying to figure out how to get the best shot here um, with the setup. So, okay, let's have this here. I'm gonna tap on it, make that the focal point. And then what it should do is then make that main item the focal point and then the rest of the, of the background will be blurry. And we did it. See, background is blurry, but my green leaf here is gonna be nice and clear and crisp. So that is done using the portrait mode section. Now, I, I did something quickly here and I wanna explain what I did because I know you guys probably didn't notice it right away. So if I wanna look at the picture that I just took, If I wanna look at the picture I just took, I need to tap on this icon here, and this is a shortcut to your photo gallery. So let's tap there. And now I can see whatever picture I just took, and I can swipe through to see all the other pictures that are on the phone. So that's just a little shortcut there. Okay, so that's just a quick rundown of using the camera. This button here is how you switch the view to the front camera. So if you want to take a selfie, you would tap that and tap it again to go back to the rear camera. Let's hit the home button now. So now let's talk about how do I go to the gallery and see all those great pictures. So again, we're going to go to Google Photos and this is where you will see all the pictures we just took. Now, when you open Google Photos for the first time, it will ask, do you want to turn on the backup function? Now this is a great thing to turn on because any picture or video you take, it's going to put a copy of it in the cloud. So guess what? If you ever lose your phone or get it stolen, you can find it easily um, going to the website photos.google.com. That's photos.google.com. So I would encourage you to turn on the backup and tap on storage saver. This will allow you to take more pictures and again, uh, back up them all to the cloud. We're gonna hit confirm, next, next, done. And now we can get to our gallery here and we can see all of our um, pictures we've taken on the phone today and also older pictures we've taken with other Google phones. All right, so Again, this is the gallery section, and this is where you'll be able to go through and see all the pictures that we've just taken, even our nice little portrait mode picture here. And that's it. All right. And actually, sorry, one more thing. So let's say I want to now share this picture that I just took. I like it, I wanna send it to a friend. You would tap on the share button in the bottom left corner here, hit allow and then I can decide who I want to send the picture to. I can hit Gmail and I can send it as an email or I can tap on more and I can hit messages and I can send it as a text message. Let's send it to Joel the third. 
it'll automatically add it to a text message and then I can hit send just like that. So that's how you also share a picture that you've just taken. And the very last thing we want to go over is the, um, now finally, I just want to go over how to browse the internet. So you have this icon here, which is your Chrome icon. You'll use this to go to the web and just surf. So we hit accept. Yes, I'm in. And now I can begin uh, going to websites just by going to search. Let's say I wanted to go to AOL.com. I would just type in the website, hit the search, and I can begin to go to different websites from here. And that's it. So this has been our Google Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro for beginners. Our goal again was just, my goal again was to just educate a first time user of a Pixel or even a smartphone on how to use the phone and how to navigate the phone. So I hope the video was helpful for you. If it was, please hit that thumbs up button down below. Show us some love. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And lastly, we ask you to leave a comment down below and let us know if the video was helpful and if there's anything else you would like to learn on the phone. Thanks again for watching, guys. Take care, and as always, have a good one.